My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services of our church for Sunday, August the 13th. We'll sing a few songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message that I hope will be beneficial to all of you. Here at Northfield, we sing from the song book, Songs of Faith and Praise. I will give you the number. I will give you the title. If you don't have that book, perhaps you have another one, or you can Google the song so that you can sing along with us. The first song that we will sing is number 477, There Is a Place of Quiet Rest. There is a place of quiet rest. <clears throat> There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, Sent from the heart of God. Hold thus who wait before thee, Near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet, Near to the heart of God. A place where we, our Savior, meet near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of full release, near to the heart of God. A place where all is joy and peace, near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. Number 580, 580, the joy of the Lord. 580, the joy of the Lord. <clears throat> the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 
The joy of the Lord is my strength. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And before the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 364, Come Share the Lord. 364, Come Share the Lord. <coughs> We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here, everyone belongs, binding our forgiveness here, we in turn forgive all wrongs. He joins us here, he breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We are now a family of which the Lord is head. Though unseen, he meets us here in the breaking of the bread. We'll gather soon where angels sing. We'll see the glory of our Lord and coming King. Now we anticipate the race for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. Um, when we gather about the Lord's table, uh, the song title is apt. We literally share the Lord. Uh, we share the Lord because uh, the love that God has for us should be burning in our hearts. For the uh, loving son who came to earth and lived as a man uh, became the perfect sacrifice for each one of us. And now that as we uh, gather about we have Jesus as our, indeed, our gracious host. And we, what we get to do is we get to take the bread and drink the wine and share the Lord. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that in your divine wisdom that you chose to allow Jesus to leave that comfortable side that he had at your right hand to come down to earth in the form of a man. We understand that he went through everything that humans went through. He was tempted, but did not yield. He was tempted, but did not sin. We have him as our wonderful example. And in that uh, he did not sin, he was made to be a sacrifice for each of us. And so as we partake of this bread, let's remember the sacrifice that Jesus made as his body was on the cross. We ask this prayer in his most holy name. Amen.
the innocent blood that Jesus shed for us is there for the forgiveness of our sins. Let's pray for the cup. Dear Heavenly Father, as we uh, drink this cup, we think of the blood that your son shed on the cross. And so as indeed we partake of this sacred feast, we do take the bread, we do drink the wine, and we do share the Lord. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And at this time, uh, we remember that it's important for us to give back to the Lord so the church can function the way it's intended to function. And so with that, we get again to share with the Lord. Uh, it's not in the, uh, the bread, it's not in the cup, but it is in uh, the blessings that we have received from our Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we think of those blessings and the comfort that he gives us, let us give back so that uh, uh, his work that is outlined in the Great Commission uh, will be on our hearts and in our minds, and that uh, this church here in Northfield will be able to uh, use those monies to further your work. Let's pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we, we just understand how blessed it is to give. And we know that you uttered those words that it indeed is more blessed to give than to receive. As we give, let's give with an open heart. Let's give with the knowledge that we're giving back to you so that the church which Jesus died for can function in the way it's supposed to function, that we can go out into all the world and make disciples of every nation. Bless us as we give. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Last song we'll sing is one of my old favorites, number 595, I Come to the Garden Alone. Let's sing the first three verses and then sing the chorus at the end. The first three verses and the chorus at the end. <clears throat> I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. But he bids me go through his voice of woe, his voice to me is calling. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I hope you enjoyed singing with us. I know that the Lord was praised in our song and will bless us as we praise him because he deserves that praise. If you were in attendance this morning at services, you heard me uh, tell you that uh, the title of uh, the lesson this evening is He Understands Me. He Understands Me. I'm going to hearken back to my memory. Uh, it goes all the way back to 1963, year I graduated from high school. Um, 
uh, music had changed. We went from a rhythm and blues type of music that was acceptable in this country and rock and roll had hit. And in the early 60s, obviously, we had the British invasion and again, a change in music. And there was a particular artist, and, and I was not a fan of Teresa Brewer. She was kind of a, a conduit between almost a, a country type music and rock and roll. It was almost like what we might refer to as doo-wop music. And in 1963, she sang a song that was written by Marge Singleton and Merle Kilgore. Uh, they wrote the song, and the title of the song is, remember the title of my lesson, He Understands Me. Now, there are some doo-wops and dum-dums in the song, and I, I'm not going to pretend to be able to sing the song. But the heart of the lyrics are repeated over and over again. And here are the heart of the lyrics of this song that Teresa Brewer made a hit. He understands me the way you never did. He loves me the way you never did. He takes the time to notice I'm around. He builds me up. He never lets me down. Now, if you can get into the lyrics of that song. Some of you are so young that uh, you can't go back to 1963. But the gist of the song is that the singer of the song was in a relationship with a person that she was not satisfied with. And so this song, I guess, is about young love and a young woman who has found someone much better than her ex. And, and why? Uh -huh. The title of my lesson. He understands me. How important is that within relationships? If you're a married person, you know that part of the rich and warm relationship that we have with our spouses is that they understand us. And uh, with that, uh, there is that age old complaint. Uh, you know, very often when we get into disagreements, one of the things that we will say as the, 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 the rock of what uh, we want to stand upon is, you just don't understand me. So, with that in mind, you know that I'm not talking about young love. I'm talking about who he is and how he understands you and I. The most important relationship we can have, that you can have, is someone who understands you better than you understand you. Now, it's difficult for people to understand us better than we understand ourselves. However, when we're talking about the one who really wants a relationship with us, he, he wants a relationship with you. And he went further to prove it than anyone else ever will or that anyone else ever could. Jesus, as we stated in the Lord's Supper, left a place of, I guess what we might call safety. He left the place knowing that his destiny would be to physically suffer. A position of supremacy that he had at the right hand of God to change into a humble servant. He left peership. We know what peers are. He, he left a peership of sovereignty for submission because we know there is the God and the Father and the Holy Spirit. He limited 
himself to humanity without surrendering his deity. As a human, Jesus could do things that no other human being could ever do. And so that even though he was human, even though he could be tempted, even though he felt pain, even though that he got tired, even though he needed sleep, even though he needed to eat, he limited himself to humanity without surrendering his deity so that he could save us. And that means saving you and saving me. And so because Jesus successfully navigated the perils that we might call the sea of life, Jesus can offer us something that no one else can possibly offer to us. He can offer us eternal life. He can offer us eternity. He can offer us that place, when we think about it, that he left that comfort place with his God. Meanwhile, because Jesus came to earth, there are daily benefits for each one of us. In John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, and then verse 14, the benefits are there because the word, that's Jesus, became flesh. And so this evening, I'm going to deal with the three eyes. That means each of my subject headings is going to start with the letter I. First, there is intercession. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 34, who is the one who condemns? That means lays a charge against the elect of God. Jesus Christ is he who died, yes, rather who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, ready for this, who also intercedes for us. You know, in a, in a world where, you know, there are certain things that are dominating the news, people hire lawyers to represent them. And because they understand the law, they serve as kind of the intercessors between the person who hires them and, you know, whoever they are brought before. Jesus is our intercessor. The Hebrew writer adds this in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25. He always lives to make intercession for those who draw near to God through him. That's the key, isn't it? Intercession happens for those who desire to draw near to God. And we know that Jesus said, no one can know the Father except that he knows me. When we pray, we were instructed to pray in the name of Jesus so the Father will hear these prayers. That's intercession. Jesus intercedes for us with God the Father. So the first I that I'm dealing with this evening is intercession. Secondly, our Jesus is not someone who just sits on his hands. Along with intercession, there is intervention. Now, the second chapter of Hebrew highlights a few things. And one of the things that the second chapter of Hebrews highlights is the possibility of drifting away from Jesus. And what it does is, it gives us a myriad of examples of why we should not want 
to drift away. We, we get the understanding that Jesus is our anchor, like the anchor on a boat that keeps it in a place that uh, whoever has that boat wants that boat to be for a period of time. One reason was that he became one of us to die for us in verse 9. And then in verse 10, we find that his appearance here helped him by understanding our struggles. It's the reason and one of the main reasons that Jesus came in human forms so he could relate to us in our struggles. Brethren, that's intervention. And in verses 11 through 13, we find that the Hebrew writer says, with that, we become part of the spiritual family. In verses 14 and 15, he went to bat for us. And what he did was he went to war with Satan and he won. Why? Because he intervened for us. Satan is the evil one. And the only way that Satan can be defeated is that he can be overcome. At the cross, Jesus overcame Satan. In verse 16 of Hebrews uh, chapter 2, it says he is there to give us help. And the writer said he had to be one of us in order for him to be our merciful and faithful high priest. And in being tempted, verses 17 and 18, it says, and here are the words, he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. Now, when we think of Jesus being tempted, we immediately go to, you know, the place after Jesus had fasted for 40 days where Satan confronted him and made these three outrageous offers for the Son of God. And, you know, if, if we want to use that as our template, surely we can. It is. This was an ultimate temptation. But don't you think Jesus was tempted in many other ways? Jesus had power that no other human on earth ever had. Do you think he was tempted to use that power for reasons other than what the miracles were intended to be? Do you, don't you, don't you think that Jesus was tempted uh, as a human being, as a male human being to see male and female relationships, to want a relationship, a special relationship with a woman? But this was not so. Jesus resisted all these temptations because he had to become our perfect sacrifice and our perfect high priest. He resisted every temptation that was out there. Uh, you know, Jesus withered the Pharisees and the Sadducees for subverting the word and not living the word the way they should have lived the word. But he did that because in Jesus coming to earth, he was designed to intervene for us as our perfect and merciful high priest. So I've completed two of the eyes. The third eye is invitation. Invitation. In knowing, in knowing that Jesus has been through everything that you've been through by itself would be comforting to me. Just by itself would be comforting to me that Jesus was able to deal with all the temptations of earth and never yield to them. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says that Jesus sympathized with our weaknesses, having been tempted 
in all ways, even that we have been tempted, yet did not sin. It's our invitation to do all that we can do to be Christ-like in our lives. Those facts lead to a consequence signaled by the therefore of verse 16. Because Jesus successfully took our place, we get to go someplace that we could never be. Because Jesus took our place, he did that on the cross. He sacrificed himself so that we can have eternal life, that we can go to the Father's throne of grace, so that we can go, and as the Hebrew writer said, boldly go. And with that, we can find that same aid. We can literally grab hold of his mercy and his grace. And so what we can do is we can, we can take our plug in cord and, and plug it into the greatest power source in the universe. We can do it for a myriad of reasons, for help, for pity, for favor. And interestingly enough, Jesus invites us, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Jesus invites us. That is the invitation. And so, with that, do we know why there's intercession? Do we know why there's intervention? And do we know why there's invitation. Why? Because Jesus understands us. He's been through what we know. In today's jargon, Jesus gets it. He's been through it. But combined with that, Hebrews chapter 7, 25 says that he is able. And it's up to us as human beings, to take advantage of those benefits that are offered to us. Why would we neglect that? Why would we neglect so great a salvation? And so, as we finish this evening, please, Jesus gets it. Jesus understands me. He was a human. He gets it. He, he has been through what we've been through. How comforting it is to know that we serve a Savior that way. And with that, we'll take that last term, the invitation. The invitation is to become part of the Lord's kingdom here on earth through understanding that Jesus is indeed the Son of God, of having heard the word and believing it, by repenting of our sins, confessing Jesus as the Son, and being baptized for the remission of our sins. If you need to come this evening, we invite you to come. If, if it is urgent, please get in touch with one of us so that we can help. Let's all pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we're so blessed to understand that the comfort that we have in the knowledge that Jesus Christ is indeed not just the Son of God, but the Son of Man. That as the Son of Man came to earth and lived as we lived, was tempted in every way that we were tempted, yet did not sin. It is no wonder that the Apostle Paul says, imitate me, for I imitate Christ. Imitation is sometimes the, the rarest and best form of flattery. To attempt to be Christ-like in our lives will get us to where we want to go. Help us to be more godly people. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, as we walk through our lives, to walk through our lives knowing that because Jesus came to earth, because he interceded, because he still intervenes, he invites us. 
Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, this evening. Help us to understand the, the power of your word and the power of your truth. Be with us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please, all of you, be safe, and may God bless you all. Amazing grace.